Thank the Lord, we come back again. Amen. Amen. I sure like to know how many among us who were, with not, who were not with us in the summertime for the first part of efficient training. Anyone who was with not, not with us in the summertime in this training, would you raise up your hand? Oh, thank you. <laughs> but anyone who were not with us in the summertime, but did get the training through the videotape in different places, raise up the hand. Very good. Number three. Anyone who both was not here, neither uh, got the uh, video trip training. Very few. Why I like to know this? Because right tonight, we just go back to the first part of training. We all have to go back. Because the message tonight is a direct continuation of that training. I would say this, if uh, <clears throat> the uh, vision of the uh, last training is gone, then tonight it might be hard for you. So I do look to the Lord that the vision we all have received in the last training may remain with all of us because tonight's first message of this training altogether depends upon the past 27 messages. Look at the uh, title of this message. All of a sudden, could you believe in the first meeting of a training, the subject is the stewardship of the grace. What is this? The stewardship. What is this? It's really hard, right? But if you still have the vision of uh, those 27 messages, on the first two chapters of Ephesians, I do believe it would not be so hard to you. You do have a foundation. You have a building there. And you are on the top of that building. So it is so easy for you to step on or even to step into this message, this two word of the Greece. Then, what is the steward? Uh, what is the stewardship? I do believe here the King James Version says what? Says a uh, dispensation. We cannot say the translation by the word dispensation is not good. It is altogether right, and it is altogether good. But just it doesn't fit in this verse. In this verse, what really the Apostle Paul means is a stewardship, a stewardship. And this word in Greek is just the anglicized English word. Economy. Economy is an anglicized word from the Greek. And this word, according to the ancient usage, this Greek word, according to the ancient usage, it means these few things. Firstly, it means what? It means the stewardship. 
It also means the dispensation. It also means the administration. Then all together, it means economy. But economy not in today's sense, not in today's meaning, not in today's use. Use economy in the uh, New Testament means what? Means a dispensation, a still worship, and even an administration. I may give you a little illustration as I did in other times. We know, according to the custom in the ancient times, with uh, a big, rich family, a big, rich family, there was always some stewards, some stewards to take care of the home affairs. And their duty was mainly to distribute, to dispense food, to dispense all kinds of precious things to the folks of the family to dispense all the necessities to all the household in a home. This is the steward does his, what? His uh, stewardship. So you can see the sincere is that our father, he has a great family, right? And this is the divine household. And our father is so rich, rich in supply, rich in everything. So in such a big household with such a rich father, there's the need of not only one steward, there's the need of many stewards to uh, what? to dispense all the riches of the father to all his children. And this dispensing duty is called here the stewardship. The stewardship is just a service of the steward, but not so much in today's sense. You must go back to the ancient and look at the ancient custom. A steward in a big home was to dispense the riches, the rich supply of the father to all his household. And such one's service is called stewardship. This word basically means what? Basically means dispensing. Dispensing. Uh, to dispense. To dispense the riches. Dispensing. So it is all together right to translate it into dispensation. The stewardship is just a dispensing ministry. So whatever this stewardship does is a dispensation, but dispensation not in today's Christianity sense. You know, in today's Christianity theology, dispensation nearly means an age or a method, an age for God dealing with people or a method or a way are a means, are a principle for God to deal with people. So you see, the word dispensation is used in a uh, way that we don't agree with. But in the New Testament, dispensation means what? Dispensation means God dispensing all his riches to his chosen ones. This is the dispensation, and this is the stewardship, which is what? Which is 
the dispensing ministry of God ministers. So, eventually what? Eventually, this dispensi, dispensation, this dispensing ministry becomes God's administration. Right? This dispensing ministry and this dispensation is God's administration. God today administrates by dispensing himself into his chosen people. And eventually, this is God's economy. I hope that we all could pick up the proper understanding of such a word. Okay? Now, in this message, the burden is that to show us in the New Testament economy of God, there is the desperate need of such a stewardship. To have such a stewardship, there's the need of a steward. Uh, a steward. I don't know how many among us tonight do realize that every apostle was a steward of God. Paul, as one of the apostles, was a steward of God. A steward. Never forget, a steward is a dispenser. A steward is a dispenser. Dispensing all the riches of God to God's children. Paul, as one of the apostles, was such a dispenser. He was such a steward. Yet, here in this chapter, as such a steward, he called himself a prisoner. And it is so strange, he called himself a prisoner of the Lord. What does this mean? A prisoner of the Lord. What does this mean? Well, this simply means in the human eyes, Paul was imprisoned by the Roman Empire. Am I right? But I tell you, actually, in the eyes of the angels, even in the sensation of Paul and those who do know the spiritual situation, Paul was not actually imprisoned by the Roman Empire, but he was imprisoned by Christ. Do you all agree with me? Yes. Paul was imprisoned by Christ. So Paul became the imprisoner, the prisoner, I mean, Paul became the prisoner of Christ. Why? Because he was imprisoned by Christ. Later on, he called himself not only the prisoner of Christ, but also the prisoner in Christ. He was imprisoned in Christ. Christ, have you ever heard, is Paul's prison. You all have to realize someday you'll be in prison in Christ. Amen. The very Christ whom you love will be your prison. Amen. Do you like it? Amen. I dare not to say that. <laughs> <coughs> Do you really love a prison? <laughs> say it. No. Especially the sisters. Do you love a prison? Do you like to be imprisoned? Yet, I tell you, I'm not a prophet, but I like to predict that someday, if not tonight, maybe tomorrow. If not this week, maybe next week. Maybe another month. Maybe not too far from 1979. You'll be put into prison. 
You will be in prison. Who is your prison? Christ. Christ. I tell you, you have to realize every steward of God. That means every minister of God's riches to his children sooner or later will be imprisoned not only by Christ, but also in Christ. In Christ. Eventually, every lover of Jesus, every faithful follower of Christ will be imprisoned in Christ. The more you love him, the more you will be in him. And eventually, to such an extent, he will be a prison to you. And I have to tell you, once you get into this prison, you will never be like, you will, be, you will never like to get out. Once you get in, you will never like to get out. You love this prison. You just love. Why? Because here, you enjoy Christ to the uttermost. We all have to thank the Lord that the top revelation in the whole Bible was seen by these prisoner in prison. Paul, as a steward of God, saw the top revelation, the top of the mystery of God. Where? In prison. And don't think his prison was the Roman Empire's house. Don't consider this way. You have to realize while he was in prison there, his real prison was Christ. He was in Christ in prison. He was enjoying Christ to the uttermost. The Roman Empire people think, thought that Paul was imprisoned in a house, but to Paul himself, he didn't have that kind of sensation. You see, his sensation was that he was there right in Christ. He was imprisoned in Christ, and he was enjoying Christ directly. I like to hear this. He was there, imprisoned in Christ, enjoying Christ to the uttermost. For whom? He says, on behalf of you. On behalf of you. Let me check with you. Suppose today we take away the book of Ephesians from the Bible. How about it? Only six chapters. Let's take away this book. Let's drop this book out of the Bible. I tell you, right away, the Bible drops. Drops. Do you know, every lover of the Bible, if you look at their Bible, I tell you, the most worn out book is always efficient. I got a few Bibles, Chinese, English, everyone, it's worn out. Where? In Ephesians. In Ephesians. My, these six chapters mean too much to us. Oh, this is the top. This is the top of the New, Tem New Testament revelation. But don't forget, this top revelation came to one who was enjoying Christ as the prison. Talking about the uh, revelation, do you realize that to see something so heavenly, so divine, you need to be a prisoner. You need to be a prisoner. I tell you, the more freedom you have, the more blind you will be. Have you ever heard this? Do you like freedom? But let me tell you, the more freedom you have, the more blind you'll be. 
If Christ today becomes a prison to you, I tell you, your eyes will be clear. The sight, oh, the sight will be with you. Then you will see the heavenly vision. You will receive the top revelation. Yet you receive such a top revelation, not for yourself, but for what? For the church on behalf of you. For the church. Today, <clears throat> the churches are the church needs again such revelation. You know why the book of Ephesians is in the Bible, yet so many Christians reading Ephesians again and again, they just don't see. Right? They just don't see the revelation here. Why? Let me tell you why. <laughs> they are not imprisoned. <laughs> they are not imprisoned. They are too free. They are too free. You see, their being free causes them to lose the sight. I tell the sight will come to you if you are willing to lose your freedom. Which do you want to lose? The freedom or the sight? Which do you want to get? It's really good. We have to pray, Lord, for the sight. I like to lose the freedom. Lord, in you, I don't like to be free. <clears throat> I like to be imprisoned. I like to be concealed. I like to be just right in you. In others' eyes, I am suffering. But in your eyes and in my sensation, Lord, I am enjoying you to the uttermost. I tell you, this kind of enjoyment by being imprisoned in Christ gives you the high light. Then you receive, you receive the revelation. I don't mean in other books of the Bible, there is not the deepest truth, a lot deep truth in the Bible. But I can tell you, the most sweet, the most sweet, Truths are in this book. Have you read or have you ever read such a word, be strengthened? Be strengthened into the inner man. This sounds heaven language. Be strengthened into the inner man. Be. Another be. Be renewed in the spirit. And the third be, be filled in spirit unto all the fullness of God eventually put on. Be strengthened, be renewed, and be filled, then put on. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. I like this. Be strengthened, be renewed and be filled. <coughs> you may say, well, this is simple. Oh, this is simple. Haha. <coughs> this may be simple. But if in the Bible there's not such a word, could you say this? I tell you, all these are new inventions. Right? Be strengthened into the inner man. Isn't this a new invention? Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. What language is this? Isn't this a new invention? Be filled in spirit. Into what? Into all the fullness of God. I tell you, these are strange expressions. Right? These are just heavenly utterances. 
These are new inventions in any kind of language. Am I right? And who invented this? Actually, even Paul did invent this. But Paul saw this. Paul saw this. Paul discovered this. Where? In the prison. Paul discovered all these strange things in the prison, which was Christ himself. When he was in prison in Christ, he saw what it is to be strengthened into the inner man. And what is to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and what is to be filled in spirit and to all the fullness of God. I tell you, today, in principle, I would testify it is exactly the same. Whenever we are outside of Christ, we just have a little freedom. Little freedom. Just be freed a little bit from Christ. I tell you, you lose what? You lose this sight. Check with yourself. Check with yourself. Whenever you just become loose, a little free, just take off from Christ for half an hour. Am I right? Right away, your spiritual sight is gone. But if you would say, Lord, I just beg to remain in you. I just beg, Lord, to abide in you. I just beg, even Lord, take you as my prison. You know the story. I do believe, if not too much, at least to some extent, you did have such experience when you were willing to remain in the Lord. Am I right? My, the sight came. The sight came, right? The heaven was open and everything was made so clear to you. By this you can see why Paul in chapter 3 saw the high vision. I tell you, in the whole Bible, you don't have such an expression that is unsearchable riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches of Christ. What kind of expression is this? Then he saw something too, too, too far beyond our apprehension. He even didn't have the language to express it. He somehow shouted, Oh, what a head! Oh, what a depth! What a width! And what a length! And he says, These are the dimensions of Christ. What are the dimensions of Christ? We will come to that part. But tonight, I still like to tell you. Do you know what is length? And how long is the length? Or how wide is the width? Or how deep is the deep depth? And how high is the height? No one can tell. I tell you, these are the dimensions of the universe, right? The height, the length, the width, the depth, all these are the dimensions of the uh, imaginable universe. I tell you, Paul says, these are the dimensions of Christ. Amen. My, what is this? What is this? Paul saw this. Paul saw this. But he saw these dimensions in a very narrowed prison. Could you please? In a very restrained prison, he saw the immeasurable dimensions of Christ. I say again, brothers, never try to get freedom out of Christ. Be willing, be willing to remain in Christ. Be willing to be imprisoned in Christ. I tell you, 
This is on behalf of the church. You may say, oh, brother, I'm just a little sister. I'm just a little sister. I tell you, I don't care whether you are a little sister or a little brother or what, as long as you are willing to remain in the prison that's Christ, you will receive something, and you will see something for the church. You will see something on behalf of the church. Now, today, what is needed throughout the whole earth is this kind of steward. This kind of steward. An imprisoned steward. A steward who is imprisoned in Christ. Then this kind of a steward surely can see something and can receive something for the church on behalf of the saints. Now, we have to go on to see what is the stewardship. And here it says what? It says the stewardship of the grace. You may translate, or you may interpret this phrase in this way. The stewardship of the grace is just the dispensing of the riches of Christ. I tell you, the stewardship here is just the dispensing ministry. The stewardship, stewardship is just dispensing ministry, the dispensation. Dispensation, dispensing what? Dispensing the grace. And what is the grace? I tell you, if you read the whole chapter 3, you will see the grace is just the riches of Christ. Never consider grace as something less than this. I tell you, the grace in the Bible is nothing less than the riches of Christ. When the riches of Christ are given to you and enjoyed by you, I tell you, all the riches become your grace. And Paul's dispensing ministry is just to dispense the riches of Christ as grace to the believers. Today, on the airplane, we all know the uh, stewardess, right? You got the word, right? <laughs> what are they doing there? They are dispensing, when the dinner time comes, food to you. Right? They don't dispense a menu to you or a recipe to you. Right? They don't dispense a kind of teaching how to cook or how to eat to you. Right? They don't teach you how to cook, neither do they teach you how to eat. They just dispense some uh, eating stuff to you, right? They dispense food to you. I tell you, this was Paul's ministry. We all are on a big, big 747. We don't have the stewardess, but we do have a steward. And this steward's name in our airplane is by the name Paul. Even tonight, he is what? He is dispensing. Amen. Dispensing what? Dispensing so many dishes to us. And all these dishes are just the riches of Christ. I tell you, these riches of Christ are the grace. The stewardship of the grace. The dispensing of the riches of Christ to the churches to all the believers, brothers, of course, and sisters, right? I'd like to check with you. 
time after time, you have come to this training. Please tell me, what does this training dispense to you? Say it. What does this training dispense to you? Right. If this training doesn't uh, dispense anything of Christ to you as grace, I tell you, this training is nothing. It's just, just vanity. Am I right? But, thank the Lord, I do have the assurance and I have the deep sensation. If you don't come, I tell you, you miss something. If you come, at least you got one dish. <laughs> Maybe your appetite is not high, your capacity is not that big, but anyhow, there's a little narrow appetite there. Narrow cap capacity. Anyhow, sitting here for a while, you got something into you. Uh, you got something into you. And I do believe even uh, some would leave the Lord recovery. But I tell you, the things that has been dispensed into them could never leave them. And for eternity, I tell you, that will bring them back. Amen. Could you teach away the very Christ who has been dispensed into you in the summer training? Impossible. It's impossible. I tell you, what is the stewardship of the grace? That is a kind of a ministry dispensing the riches of Christ into our being. Let's see. Firstly, it says something concerning the still worship. Look at your outline. The still worship, firstly, according to God's economy. I tell you, actually, still worship economy are the same word in Greek. So here, it means what? Still worship according to still worship. Uh, economy according to economy. It seems it doesn't make sense. Well, it makes a lot of sense. Why? Listen to this. When the same thing was with God, that was economy. And when the same thing comes to me or to you, the same thing becomes a stewardship. With God, it is economy. With you and me, it is a stewardship. Well, you may see, Brother Lee, I am just a small member. Huh? Uh, or you would be so humble to say, you know, Lord, you know, Brother Lee, in the local churches, I am just a small potato. <laughs> I am just nothing. See? I don't think I have any still worship. But let me tell you, I just put aside the brothers. I say this to the young sisters. I don't even say this to the older sisters. I say this to young sisters, young sister, every one of you has a stewardship. And what is the stewardship? That is according to God's economy. What is this? Now, what is this? This is this. Ah, after you attend such a training, ah, I use our common uh, talk. You got infused, right? You got infused. You got infused. Uh, then you go back to your locality. And then you contact some of those who have not come here. Then you give them just a little fellowship. See? And in your fellowship, aha, uh -huh, 
I use your word, you just infuse Christ to them. I tell you, this infusing of Christ into them, you know what it is? This is the stewardship. And this is the dispensing. This is dispensing of Christ into your co-sister, into your fellow sister. And you may be just a, a, a sinner uh, in junior high, seven year, 17 or 18 years of age, right? You can be a steward with a very good stewardship. Uh, dispensing Christ into your classmates. And this is the stewardship of grace. And this is to dispense the riches of Christ into others. I tell you, this dispensing of Christ into others is your stewardship according to God's economy. God has an economy. What to do? To do what? God has an economy just to dispense himself in Christ as riches to people. Right now, I'd like to check with you young sisters. I feel burdened this time to uh, have more fellowship with you young sisters. Would you please tell me why God created the heavens and earth? You just tell me. Why God created the heavens and earth? Young sisters, many are here. Why? Why God created the heavens? Why God created the earth? Be bold. For man. Why for man? Yeah, uh, man is for God. By what way? Yeah, to leave God. Uh, by what way? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, on man's side is to take God into man. But on God's side is to dispense God into man. I tell you, God created the heavens for dispensing himself into man. God created the earth for dispensing himself into man. Why? Without the heavens, the earth is hard. Without the, heart, without the earth, man cannot exist. So without man, God cannot dispense himself into man. If you check with me, what is the desire in God's heart? I tell you, from eternity to eternity, the desire on God's heart is just to dispense himself into you. You, 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 so many yous. Into me, so many me's. Into him, and so many him's. Into her, so many hers. I have to tell you, if you don't know this point, you have never known what is the Bible. You may say, how about uh, the uh, student in the seminaries, they never heard this. Then I would say, if they never heard this, they never knew the Bible. <laughs> you may say it. Brother Lee is altogether too much. <laughs> Whether too much or not too much, I don't care for that. I only care for one thing. I tell you the central <laughs> point of the Bible is that God desires to dispense himself into you. God doesn't like to stay in himself. He just doesn't like to remain himself. He likes what? To get into you. He likes to get into me. He likes to dispense himself into so many children by him. 
and you turn your thing, he made it turn out in purple, purpose. To dispense himself into men. So he created the earth, the, 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 the heavens for the earth, and he created the earth for men, and he created men, I tell you, for himself to dispense into them. We all have to see this. Today, this is God's economy. This is God's economy. God's economy is just to dispense himself into you. If you would carry out his economy, I tell you, this carrying out by you is your stewardship. Have you got it? What is stewardship? Stewardship is according to God's economy. That is to dispense God into others. I tell you, this is your dispensing ministry. This is your stewardship. And this is according to God's economy, according to God's heart's desire, according to God's eternal plan. This is all together according to God's administration. Don't think only the Apostle Paul could be steward. Only he had the stewardship. I tell you, didn't he say in this chapter? Later on we will see. He says he even is less than you. That means he even is smaller than you. Don't say you are small. Paul says he's less than the least of all the saints. Now you please tell me who is greater, Paul or you? Who is less, Paul or you? Paul is less, then you are greater, right? See, yes or no? Yes. Ah. You see, our Christian concept have to be uh, revolutionized. <laughs> All the time we think, Paul, my goodness, Paul, was that great? Yeah. No, this is wrong. Paul was not that great. Paul was less than you. Right? If he can be a steward, couldn't you be? If he had stewardship, how about you? I tell you, all of us can dispense the riches of Christ to others. Today, in Christianity, everything has been made so low, too low. I just say to win the souls. It's too low. But I would say, young sisters, when you go to your school on your class, you what? You better dispense Christ into your classmates. How about this? You better dispense, dispense, dispense the riches of Christ into your classmate. Even among us. We never pick up this kind of expression for contacting others. May we begin to use it? How about this? Brothers and sisters go to a school to do what? Not only to win souls, but to dispense, to dispense the riches of Christ into others. Then you all are good stewards. And you all are doing a good stewardship, right? You are good stewards, and you are doing good stewardship to minister Christ to people by dispensing the riches of Christ into them. This is according to God's economy. Then, the second title is very meaningful for God's dispensation. 
This still worship is according to God's economy and for God's dispensation. I mentioned already still worship, economy, dispensation. I tell you, these three words are actually the same. Right? But I like to put it this way. With God, it is his economy. With you, it is your still worship. For what? For the dispensation of God. This means what? For dispensing God into us. Into others. For dispensing God into others. I like to help you. You may say, brotherly, you are just playing words. Still worship is just economy, and economy is just dispensation, and dispensation is just steward. Why you play words here? Still worship is according to God's economy for God's dispensation. I tell you, I'm not praying words. Okay, you three brothers come up. How about? Let's demonstrate a little bit. Huh? Okay. See? See, this is God. This is God. And uh, God is so rich. Riches. Riches. <laughs> Any more? Oh, riches. All the riches. See, these are the riches of God. And he has, this God has a heart. A heart, a desire to dispense all the riches, actually, the riches are just himself. To uh, others. Okay, another one, please. Others. And others. All the others. You see? All the others. God's intention is just to dispense his riches into these people. And one day, God called this one. Called this one. And God, through someone, dispenses the riches into this one. See? Okay. Into this one. And this one, pick up the burden to uh, dispense the riches of God to the others. You see? To all the others. Okay. Listen to this. You have seen the... Uh, the, uh, the story, right? With God, it is the economy. Am I right? And with him, it is the stewardship. And with all these others, it is the dispensation of God. Have you got it? The economy of God is here. When this economy goes to this person, it becomes his stewardship. When he does his stewardship, and this becomes the dispensation of God into these people. So you have the economy, the stewardship, and the dispensation. And the stewardship is according to God's economy and for dispensing God into the people. Amen. Thank you, brother. But return riches. <laughs> <sighs> Why I like to spend so much time on this one thing? I like somewhat to uh, enrich your Christian concept. Oh, the Christian concept today is too poor. Uh, just to, uh, to preach the gospel or to win souls. We better learn to realize it is not that poor. We are going to do what? To dispense God. 
We are going to carry out God's economy. Am I right? Go to the school. Go to the school. Go to your class. Go to your classmates. Not just to preach the gospel. Not just to win the souls, but to what? To dispense God. To carry out your stewardship according to God's economy for his dispensation. How are these? I tell you, when you would be uh, permeated with this kind of high concept, oh, you will feel you got a tin wind flying in there. Am I right? We are not that low. We are very high. We are not doing the preaching. We are not doing the winning. We are doing the dispensing. Dispensing what? Dispensing the very God. Dispensing the very God into man. What a glorious ministry. Right? What a wonderful stewardship. We all have it. We all have it. You have it. I have the assurance that you have it. And no doubt I have it. I'm not boasting to say that I have it. Don't you believe I have it? If you don't believe, I demonstrate to you. Now I am dispensing God to you. Oh, a small old folk here is dispensing what? Not DDT to you. <laughs> right? I'm dispensing God to you. I'm dispensing the riches, the unsearchable riches of Christ to all of you. No need to say after 30 meetings, 30, just after this one meeting tonight, when you go back home, and something got in you. Couldn't you dispense God? Say it strongly. Amen. Yes. If you will not say it, I say it for you. Yes. We all can dispense God. Then we go on. Here it says the grace. The dispensation of grace. Oh, the stewardship of grace. What is grace? In brief, it says here, grace firstly came through Jesus Christ. If you would understand me rightly, I would check with you. How about the time of the Old Testament? In the Old Testament time, was there grace? Say it. Uh -huh. You are quite bold. But you say right. You are right. Why? In the Old Testament time, it was the law there. The law was given there, but not grace. It was until Christ came. Grace came. Grace came through Christ. Because before Christ's coming, grace wasn't there. I like to stress this. Just to show you the misunderstanding of so many Christians concerning the matter of grace. They think grace is just a blessing. You know, even yesterday in our elders' training meeting, we talk about this. There's a hymn, even in our hymnal, count the blessing. 
one by one. Yeah. What does it mean? You have to count miles. In year 1978, God has given me a better car and uh, a bigger. This grace never came before Christ. Right? Grace came through Christ. Before Christ coming, the grace was not there. And what was there? Blessing. Blessing was there, not grace. Why? Grace is nothing less than God himself. Given to you, gained by you, and enjoyed by you. This is grace. God given and enjoyed by you. I tell you, this is grace. Before Christ came, God could not be given to anyone. I tell you, before Christ came, no one can receive God and enjoy God. But today, I tell you, in Christ, through Christ, we can receive God. Am I right? And we can enjoy God. And God becomes our enjoyment. I tell you, this is grace. Grace is just God himself as our enjoyment. This is grace. So, the stewardship of grace is just the dispens dispensing of God himself for our enjoyment. Dear saints, I sure like to check with all of you in the past, no need to say years, just the past, Weeks in the past days, haven't you enjoyed God as grace? I tell you, this is grace. To dispense this grace to others, this dispensing is our stewardship. And this stewardship is according to God's economy for dispensing God into others. I like to repeat again and again because all these concepts are new to us. Am I right? It is new. It is absolutely new. Yet, we have to realize we are in it. Hallelujah. Amen. We are in it. Today, in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are daily partaking of our God as our enjoyment. So we can dispense this very enjoyment, which is our God, to others. I tell you, this is the dispensation of grace. Now we go on. The ministry of a minister. <coughs> I just hate to say but I just cannot avoid. Christian today <laughs> talk a lot of things they don't know. They talk a lot about ministry, ministry, body ministry, they can ministry, that can ministry. Uh, we uh, we uh, 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 accept all ministries. What is the ministry in the Bible? Please tell me. I tell you, in the whole Bible, there's only one ministry. Peter's ministry, Paul's ministry, even our ministry, your ministry, and my ministry, all are one ministry. One ministry. In the Bible, there's only one ministry. And what is this ministry? I don't believe thus far tonight Surely, you have got to know already. The ministry is just the stewardship. And the stewardship is just the dispensing ministry. And this ministry is just to dispense what? Dispense God into others. Sisters, 
after the ministry? Uh -huh. You go back to your mother. And you minister Christ to your mother. I tell you, you will do the best ministry. I'm right. After the training, you go back to minister Christ to your sister, to your father, to your neighbors. I tell you, this is the ministry. What is the New Testament ministry? The New Testament ministry is just to minister. That means to dispense Christ into others. I tell you, not only we, the brothers who minister the word of God, not only the elders who <coughs> take care of the local building, I tell you, even you all, every saint, every member in the church has a part in this ministry. So sometimes I say strongly, don't be held back by your old concept. You think I'm not a minister. You think you are not a minister, right? I just ask again to check with your young sisters. Do you dare to say that you are a minister? Huh? Today, even this word minister is poorly spoiled. Poorly spoiled. You know, this word minister in Greek simply means what? A serving one. One that serves. One that serves. I tell you, this corresponds with the word steward. What is steward? A steward is one that serves. Serves in what way? Not serves in cleaning, sweeping the flower. Not in that way. A steward is one that serves in what? In dispensing food. In dispensing uh, life necessity to the household. I tell you, this is a steward, and such a steward is a minister. You may say, oh, among us, Brother Lee is a minister. If you say this, you insult me. You have to tell me, Brother Lee, I'm so proud to tell you tonight, not only you are a minister, Brother Lee, do you know? I'm a little sister. This little sister is also a minister. Amen. Sister, do you dare to say this? Okay, I would ask you all five sisters and stand up and tell them, everyone declare. I am a minister. Stand up and tear your face to all the congregation, one by one, declare. I am a minister. Okay. Amen. I am a minister. 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 Amen. Very good. But I like to ask, Minister of what? Very good. <laughs> Minister of Christ. Amen. Minister of God. Amen. Ministering Christ to others. I tell you, brothers, even your sisters, when you go back after this training, right where you practice it. First, you tell your mother, mother, <laughs> you have to realize now I am a minister. <laughs> I am a minister, ministering Christ to you. Mother, I tell the truth, you don't have that much Christ. You need Christ. I come back with a lot of Christ. 
I can bear full of Christ. I just cannot bear the loot. I just like to load the Christ into you. I am a minister, mother. From now on, you better call me minister. <laughs> you think I'm joking? We all have been drugged by Christianity concept. We all have been held back by this wrong blue concept. Hallelujah. Are you not a minister? Amen. Well, all our ministers. Amen. Well, I know some among you still would argue. Ha ha. Brother Lee, this is altogether too much. Maybe. But anyhow, I'd like to encourage you all to do your minister job. You all have to minister Christ to others. Oh, the minister. We do have a ministry. We have thousands and thousands among the Lord's recovery, but we only have one ministry. Don't say your ministry, my ministry. We have to say our ministry. Our ministry is what? It's just to minister Christ to others. Our ministry is just to dispense Christ into others. Hallelujah. For such a glorious ministry. Oh, the ministry of a minister. According to the gift of the grace of God. The grace we have seen already, that is God for our enjoyment. In other words, the grace is just God being life and life supply to us. And we have to know this life and life supply is the living. Right? It's operating. I tell you, by this operating life, a kind of ability comes out. And the ability is the gift. Could you follow me? According to the gift of the grace of God. Grace is God as life to us. And this life is living, is operating, right? And this operating life gives us an ability, a talent. And this ability, this talent is what? It's just the gift. I say again, don't think only the Apostle Paul has this kind of ability. I would say, say, all of you, all of you do have such an ability. <clears throat> Let me illustrate in this way. Look at my body. You see, my hand, right, has an ability to grasp things. Right? And my shoulder has an ability to bear some burden. Right? And this ability is the gift. And this gift, this ability, comes out of what? Comes out of the blood life within these members. Right? Suppose blood doesn't go into my hand. Then my hand is short of life. There's nothing there working, operating, right? But now blood gets into my hand and this blood life operates within my hand and this operating blood life gives me the ability, gives the hand the ability, right? The same thing, the blood life operates and this operation of the blood gives the shoulder the ability to bear things. I hope that you can see this. We all are members of Christ. And in every one of us, as a member, we have what? We have the blood life. We have the life of God. And this life operates within us. And this operating life produces issues 
in certain ability. That is the gift. So we all can do the ministry because we all have some amount of gift. You don't need to learn that much. Sisters, you just be bold and be strengthened and be encouraged going back today. Uh, going back this time to your mother and tell your mother you are a minister. Minister and cry to him, uh, to her. I tell you, as long as you are a living member of Christ, you do have the grace. That is the life within you, working, operating, that you may have an ability, a talent to minister Christ to others. Then it says, I covered this point already. Everyone, everyone can have such a grace to produce such a gift because Paul was less than you. And this last one had the life and had the gift. Then you surely could have the same life and the same gift, right? Then this ministry is to preach. Preach what? Not to preach doctrine, not to preach the teaching, not just to preach the word, but to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ as the gospel to preach the unsearchable riches as the gospel. Well, our gospel is a person with all his riches. And we preach this, this means what? When we preach this, we minister the riches of Christ to others. And this kind of ministry is for producing the church. For producing the church, and this is according to the revelation of the mystery in spirit. Brothers, it doesn't mean whether you are the Apostle Paul or you are just you. It doesn't mean that. It means what? It means, do you have the revelation? You see, have you ever seen the mystery of God in spirit? As long as you have the revelation and you see the mystery of God in your spirit, I tell you, you do have such a ministry. You have a ministry to minister Christ into others because you have seen the mystery of God and the mystery of God is just Christ himself. And you also have seen the mystery of Christ and the mystery of Christ is just the church. When you have seen the mystery of God, that is Christ, and you have seen the mystery of Christ, that is the church, I tell you, you have the revelation in the spirit. Then what? Then you can minister Christ to others. Well, I just say this much tonight. I leave the rest of the time. It's about 20 to 30 minutes for your testimonies, for your sharing. Now, I encourage all of you be strong to share something with us. I still feel we better go uh, by uh, uh, sections. How about tonight we go uh, to uh, E section? If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on social media or visit our website for more from Living Stream Ministry.